It was a great panel, everyone. Uh, tough act to follow. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to talk about T-Vision. Uh, I'm going to start by giving you some context on the problem we're trying to solve and then dive into some of the engineering challenges that we faced and how we overcame them. So about T-Vision, uh, as uh, Evan just mentioned, we have been uh, in the industry, uh, we, the, the, the attention measurement, understanding what people are watching and whether or not they're paying attention to what they're watching, it's a, it's a woefully inadequate and archaic means of collecting the data. Actually, what this happened, the way this goes on right now, it is after the fact, after people have viewed some programming, they're sent surveys. Uh, in some other cases, people are asked to actively participate in responding to what they're watching, whether they're still engaged with what, what, what they're watching by pushing buttons. And the other uh, shortcoming of this approach is that there is actually no way for people to know who in the household watched some, some content. So, um, so the way uh, T-Vision comes at it is by using computer vision to understand what is on the screen, uh, what people, whether or not people are engaged with what they're, the, the content they're consuming, and uh, also we are able to tell who is watching that content. Um, so we are using uh, computer vision technology to actually disrupt this 200 billion with a B market. Uh, what are we doing? We are actually uh, trying to understand uh, one, whether or not there is somebody who is being exposed to programs or to ads. And of the time that they are actually exposed, which means they are in the room, they, are, uh, they, are, they have the ability to, to watch something, to engage with some programming. Of the fraction of the time that they are there, what fraction of the time do they actually engage with it? So those are the key data points that we try to get from, uh, from our uh, audience measurement. How do we do it? Uh, well, we do it by placing a camera and a little compute device uh, on premises. Uh, the camera is facing the audience. And we are doing all of our computation on the, on the small footprint device that is connected to the camera. So we do not take any, off, any, uh, any, any, any video at all, any frames at all, off premises. Um, and then we are trying to get this data at a second by second measurement. So we are, we, this is not kind of going back and trying to understand people talking to us and telling us what their sentiments are. We are collecting how people are perceiving what is on the screen uh, in, in real time. Uh, uh, and again, on a second-by-second -second basis. Uh, and then we are actually computing the, the attention that somebody is paying uh, to, to the screen. So as I will uh, talk about uh, in subsequent slides, it is key to us to understand uh, the pose information, the gaze information of the audience. So engineering, uh, the solution. So some of the, uh, it's important to kind of realize that we have uh, some very, uh, some, some constraints that limit the kind of technologies that we can use and how we can deploy those technologies. Uh, it has to be a single model that works in many uh, environments. We do not control how are the people who are viewing TVs in their living rooms, what the lighting conditions are, uh, whether or not they are occluded, whether or not they have blanket on them, whether it's sitting, standing, or running on the treadmill. Um, and uh, we need to do all of our computation on the edge. Uh, we cannot take any private information off premises. Uh, we need to be able to collect data from at least one data point per frame. That is, that is kind of uh, what we, what we uh, sorry, uh, one data point per second. So that is, so we need to guarantee that we are able to process at least one frame a second. And we need to deploy, this may not seem that important, but we need to deploy our hardware, uh, which is people are, are kind of okay having it in their, in their living rooms. Uh, and we need to minimize cost because this is a capital expenditure on TVision's part. Uh, so originally we used Connect. Uh, we relied on it in a big way to, to, for our computer vision pipeline. We have just moved it to a, uh, a using off-the-shelf camera. We do not use any depth information anymore. Uh, we use deep uh, uh, neural nets to 
uh, to un get pose information. Um, we detect humans, we track humans. Uh, we kind of have trained our own model for tracking. Uh, we use something called graph cut algorithms to track the path of people across multiple frames. Um, sometimes we interpolate across frames just because we need to maintain that frame rate where we're collecting data from. We need to recognize people and we need to measure their, their attention. So to be realistic, how we did it, we have to make a lot of trade-offs. We have to shrink the frames before we pass it to the, to the neural net uh, because it's a very compute-intensive uh, compute uh, uh, phase of the competition, uh, of our pipeline. Uh, but eventually, all of the, uh, the post data makes its way to our attention measurement, and that's where we extract out the, 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 the head pose, the, the facial features and all that to compute whether or not somebody is paying attention and what their gaze is. Um, how we engineered the solution. Uh, this is the last slide I'm gonna leave you with. All, everything we did, everything I've talk, talked about, eventually when the rubber hit, meets the road, uh, there are a lot of trade-offs you have to make. We spend, we, we, we annotated countless millions of frames. Uh, we uh, ran a whole lot of models in AWS on GPU nodes. Uh, we evaluated many, many hardware solutions. Some of these were modules, uh, solution on modules. Some of these were just PCs. Some of these were many, many different kinds of cameras. Uh, we built repeatable training pipelines. That's been an, a key thing that I, you know, I think we should all realize is that there's research and there's engineering. And when we start to uh, engineer the solution, we need to have repeatability, we need to have tests, uh, and we need to be able to run the same pipeline through uh, and try out multiple models. And then eventually the solution that made it out to our devices uh, again, you know, things like using RxPy, adding a lot of asynchrony for people who are, um, I don't know if some are familiar with that or not, uh, Docker for installation, a lot of uh, collecting metrics from our devices, uh, and of course, TensorFlow that's going to run on these devices. Thank you.